I wanted to go over a tray that I actually just placed in Apple today. I was uh, looking at the stock. It's, again, it's another one of the ones I, that are on my uh, list that I look at quite often and I try to keep up with and see if there are potential trades on it. And I was actually arguing in a chat room a little earlier about a potential long here. And, uh, you know, first of all, let me say, yes, it is in an area where I think that you would have a long but I would like to see something to indicate to me that that's the direction we're headed. In other words, uh, you know, a break above you know, this high would be nice to see. Uh, or you know, maybe another pull down to here with a candle that looks like this one. Maybe not quite that big of a wick, but something like this one. Uh, or even this one showing where it's bouncing a little bit. I'd prefer to see that before I just jump straight into a long. And that was kind of what uh, we were discussing in the chat room is, uh, you know, as I posted my opinion of Apple right now, you know, where it's pulled back and to what I consider to be a buy zone. However, please note that just because I say it's in a buy zone does not mean that I'm buying it now or a sell zone doesn't mean I'm selling it now. All it really means is that it's in an area where I'm starting to really pay close attention to price action to set up a trade. And that's what I see Apple is right now. It's in an area where I'm really starting to pay close attention to this price action. You know, these are my Bollinger Bands indicators. Uh, you can learn how to set those up in the comment, I mean, the description below. So if you haven't already got these set up, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, you know, one thing that's concerning when I move up is we are at a 52 week high here. Although it didn't have any problem breaking it all through here as it rode up through this uh, two ATR move right through here. But uh, uh, I, I, said, I think we're in a buy zone now. I'd just like to see some confirmation uh, on the Bollinger Band side that I don't see at the moment. Uh, you know, you can see you've got a little bit moving down you know, of your Bollinger Bands and uh, as the, uh, the stock is starting to slow down on volume. So that's what these blue lines are. Uh, so it's a good, which is, is a good time to play some different types of trades, which is actually what I ended up doing. But I'll get to that in just a moment. Let's take a look at the other indicators I use. Uh, you know, this is uh, actually this is my uh, wave indicator. Uh, according to this, it's still out of the buy zone, which is what I was saying when I was talking to you about the Bollinger Band. You know, potential buy setup it's showing is I don't have it on my wave indicator right now as a buy. You know, it's still showing extended, so I, I needed to pull back into here for a buy here. So that's one reason that when I say, okay, I don't see it as a buy right this second, but I am watching price action. It's because I don't have a buy here. Down here I had a buy. You know, or through here I had a buy. You know, even in this area, I, you know, I had a buy. This could have been seen as a buy except for the fact that, you know, these are pretty solid moves down after earnings, and this was a gap down. So, you know, I, I would be very timid about trying to place a long right there after this price action. Uh, I probably would not have been looking, you know, until right in here. And here I would have had to make a decision of whether to go short or long. And, and looking at the previous price action, I, I think it probably lean, lean, would have leaned more toward a long. But I didn't do that analysis. We're up here today, so let's talk about that one. So right here on, on, my, move, on my wave indicator, I'm really not showing it as a buy yet. But it is in a better position than it was yesterday. And let's take a look at our moving averages. You know, right here, yeah, I am showing a potential buy here on the moving average. You know, this is the 10, uh, you know, EMA. So, so there is a potential uh, of a buy right here if you look at how it's bounced on this 10 EMA through here. You know, ideally, I would rather buy at the blue or the yellow. But, you know, going back to my, what I saw in the Bollinger Bands, you know, this is still a potential buy setup on this particular indicator. So what did I decide to do today since I'm telling you that I, I can't go long yet. I'm, I'm close to seeing a long, either a move back over here or a move back into here and then up. So I'm close to where I would I'd like to see a long trade, but, but I'm really not there yet to where I feel comfortable just placing it and, and just moving on. So what I decided to do is play a non-directional strategy. And I'm really basing that on the fact that we're, we're kind of losing momentum through here. Uh, you know, it's in a, a kind of a, a median type zone. Uh, I wanted to try to find some good support resistance. And I'm going to go ahead, because I actually have already placed this trade, so I'm going to go ahead and draw in where I actually did, uh, you know, place my short put and my, my short call for the, iron, for the iron condor that I sold just a few minutes ago. And what I did is I went up to about 280 on my short, on my short, uh, 
call. So that's right there. And on my short put, I ended up having to come up to, you know, 242.50, which is right here. And I'll show you how I, I picked those strikes in just a second. But the first thing I like to look at, if I, once I determine what strikes are in play, is I like to see what kind of support and resistance that I've got on these strikes. And you can see this 280 is up at the 3 ATR. Yes, it, it can hit the 3, TA, 3 ATR. You know, yes, it can even exceed it, but it typically is going to pull back at some point. You know, right here at the 3 TA, ATR, it consolidated and moved up again. Now, obviously, if, I, if tomorrow it were to gap up to this 3 ATR, then I'm probably going to be in a lot of trouble on this iron condor. But they typically do not do that on the price action, so, uh, you know, it could happen, and that's one reason that you do an iron condor, so you have fixed risk. On the downside, you know, I've got, you know, I, I've got, I'd have to have a move through support here, through the mean, uh, this mean area, a move through the 1 ATR and all the way down, because by the time it moves down, the 2 ATR will be here, and the 3 ATR is going to start moving up unless it starts down here, so it consolidates or move up. So I've got pretty good support right here, you know, I've got resistance here. It's hard to pick a resistance after you get into kind of no man's land above a 52-week high. But, you know, the distance between these strikes, I feel pretty good about. Let's see how it looks on the other uh, uh, indicators. You know, in order for it to threaten my put, it's going to have to break through the wave completely, which, yes, it can do that. But, you know, with exception of here after this earnings event, you know, typically, if it breaks through the wave on an uptrend, it's going to want to go back up. So I've got the wave plus a 2 ATR move protecting me here. And let's take a look at the moving averages. So in order for it to threaten me, I'm going to have to go through this moving average, this moving average, and, you know, if it consolidates a little, this moving average, which is the 50, is going to move up, and I'll have that one to break through. So I'll, on the put side, I feel pretty good, you know, barring some sort of market event that none of us can control that could cause this to just, you know, drop, and that can always happen. That's always the risk you take. That's one reason I like to sell iron condors, because at least I know what my risk is. And this one is also did in my small account, so that, that's also, you know, not a lot of risk for me. So let's take a look at how I set this trade up, and I'll, and I'll show you kind of what I looked at when I set it. So I went in to analyze on the thinkorswim indicator. I went for the, uh, I actually sold the 27 Decembers, which are 36 days out. I like to sell my iron condors between 28 to 45 days. So I, I went here, and the first thing I did was I grabbed... Uh, something around a dollar, which in this case was a Delta 8, but so something around a dollar. I'm going to sell an iron condor here, and then on the upside, I did the same thing. I did the 282.50, and so I'm going to change the puts to, let's see, that was the one, okay, so 282.50, I'll move this up to 282.50, and 285. I started looking at just a two and a half, uh, uh, $2.50 spread to start with. So that would put me at the dollar, but at eight delta here, and on the 282, I'm at a 13 delta. So that's pretty good. Anything you know, under a 20 delta is not terrible. However, I'm only getting a 36 cent credit, and that just wasn't enough. So what I ended up having to do to get the credit I wanted is I had to keep moving this up to 242 and uh, 240 which right now it's showing a 54 cent credit. When I placed the trade, I actually had it in as a, as a 60 cent credit and I did get filled at that. But that put me up at a 16 delta, which is still below 20, so that's not terrible. So, and I was able to keep the 282, actually I had to drop the 282 to a 280 and a 282.50 in order to get the credit I want. So that's actually still showing at a 62 cent credit, but I got filled at a 60, so we'll drop it. So that put me at a 16 delta uh, on this put here, uh, and it puts me at a 17 delta here. So again, less than 20. I still feel pretty good about that. We'll look at the risk profile, which is another great thing think, Thinkorswim gives you. Uh, you can just look at the deltas if you want, but you know, this is a great visual. Set expiration to the 27th, and I'm going to change this to break even, so it shows me I've got a 64.73% chance of this particular uh, trade finishing between the break-even points, which is, is good. That's right in the range I look for. Typically, anything over 60% is good. Every once in a while, you might see me do a 50 or a 58% if I get a really good credit. Uh, because I've got a 60 cent credit and a 64% return, I'm going to look to close this trade at about 30 cents, which is 50%. 
you, you could do try to close it at about you know 40 percent of this uh, if you wanted to but between 40 to 50 on this type of return now had this been a, a higher credit here and say a 55 percent then i probably would have looked to close at about a 60 percent of this because i have more risk so so my actual over, my overall potential return is actually higher than the 64.7 because I'm not trying to get this whole 60 cent credit. I just want to keep half of it. And that'll give me about a 13%, 13 to 15% return on this trade when it's all said and done. It's a little below what I look for, but it's not too bad. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Please click on the alerts. I'm posting videos quite often. Uh, just trying to get a lot of information out there to you, especially on the education side. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I'll be glad to answer those for you. Thank you.